Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today I share with you all my favorite miniature prep equipment. That sounds very compelling. Ooh, prep equipment. Ha! What up, Mini Family? Back in November of 2018, I did a four-part series where I went over my favorite paintbrush, beginner paint set, airbrush, and also primer. You can see it linked in the top right-hand corner of the screen. But there's more equipment that goes into the hobby of miniature painting. So today, I'm gonna share with you my favorite prep equipment that I use on virtually all of my models. Number one is the most ubiquitous hobby tool of them all, the X-Acto Blade. An X-Acto blade is great for cleaning mold lines and also general purpose cutting. I use the Excel brand. I love the rubberized grip and I also love that you can loosen the blade at the bottom so you're not getting your fingers near the blade itself. It's also keyed so you can use a wrench if it's stuck. Next on my list for hacking and slashing are some flush trim cutters. My go-to cutters are from the Xeron brand, specifically the 410 model. I love how sharp and accurate a point it comes to. There are some other cutters that have sloppier tips and it makes it hard to use when certain parts of the sprue are very small. Lastly, if I wanna cut material without pinching it like flush trim cutters do, I reach for my hobby saw. With a nice thin kerf, this tool will get nice cuts without removing too much material without pinching it either. Next up, let's talk about a tool that's used specifically for cleaning, flexible sanding twigs. You've probably seen me use them on the channel before. I like these because they're spongy, which means they conform to the surface you're sanding. My variety has a 280 grit on one side and a 320 on the other, so it gets a nice surface finish. They're also nice and thin, so you can get them into tight spaces. Lastly, for cleanup, you need the ability to do some rough removal, and that's where metal files come in. These things can last forever if you take care of them, and by take care of them, I mean don't get super glue on them or gunk them up with milliput dust. I like the Tamiya brand because the round file comes with an incredible point, allowing you to access a lot of different spots. Now let's talk about adhering pieces of our miniatures together. Superglue is a necessity. I typically use Bob Smith Industries Superglue, but there isn't a particular reason why. Whatever superglue you use, however, getting some quick set is very helpful. Quick set allows for instant drying of superglue, which is incredibly helpful when you are gluing two pieces together that are hard to hold in position. Also, superglue comes in a variety of thicknesses. I find it very handy to have superglue thin on hand as well as the medium superglue thickness. I often use superglue thin to cement my basing material down and I use medium for virtually everything else. Last on the list for adhesion is Tamiya's thin plastic cement. I love how this stuff works. You take two pieces, dry fit them, run a bead around the seam and it welds it together and hides the seam a little bit too. Another helpful hobby tool is a set of tweezers. You can use these guys for picking up small bits to hold while you're gluing them in place, fishing out small little leaves for your diorama, getting decals out of water as they're soaking. I mean, we paint miniatures for God's sake. So there's about a million things you could use tweezers to pick up. Now onto putties. I use green stuff, epoxy sculpt, and milliput. They're all two part putties, but they have different properties. Milliput can be thinned with water to a very diluted consistency, making it great for filling thin gaps or for smoothing out. It also can be sanded very nicely when it's fully cured. Green stuff has more of a stickier quality to it, and it's also less brittle than milliput, but it doesn't sand nicely, and it's also not water soluble. Lastly, you have epoxy skull, which is kind of like an in-between version. It isn't water soluble like milliput is, but it's a lot softer and more malleable than green stuff. It makes it really nice for filling larger gaps. In regards to smoothing these putties, my favorite tool are color shapers. Typically the way the colors work is white is softest, gray is medium firmness, and black is most firm. But I found out when I ordered some black color shapers online that they were as soft as my old gray ones that I had. So it seems there isn't much standardization in colors. It was only until I actually went to an art supply store to pick up some of these where I could actually feel them to make sure that they were nice and firm. We don't want no limp dick color shapers. Also helpful for smoothing and just general putty manipulation tasks are metal dental tools. And I find myself using this one in particular because of the nice scooped back it has. 
It's great for smoothing out large areas of putty where color shapers typically fail. And I'm sure the other tools that I have are probably useful, but I find myself doing mostly gap filling and also very basic sculpting. So I tend to just stick to this one. Another commonly discussed tool that I find myself using fairly frequently is a metal awl. You can use it to scrape chunks of paint and primer that are stuck in the crevices of your miniature out, say after you tried to strip it. You can use it for certain kinds of sculpting. You can use it to make an indentation for a pilot hole for a drill. I mean, the list of things that you can do with a sharp, pointy stick is kind of endless, so it's good to have one or two of those things on hand. But speaking of drilling, lastly, a little bit of that Lux Life, an electronic rotary tool. Gone are the days of using manual drills. Now you can pick up all the chicks with your sick variable speed action. A long time ago, I was gifted the Dremel 4000, so that's what I've been using. I've picked up a keyless chuck so I can install my drill bits easily. The variable speed comes in handy when I'm drilling something in a tight space, like a gun barrel, but it's bulky to hold, so I picked up a flex shaft for it. However, this is kind of getting a little expensive. If I were buying a drill right now, I might consider the Proxon 28512, which is smaller, lightweight, quieter, and also already comes with a keyless chuck. If you think you're going to use the attachments for the Dremel 4000, I'd consider buying it. But if I was just upgrading from Stone Age drilling, I'd probably buy the Proxon 28512. Well, those are all the tools that I use for miniature preparation. Are there any ones that you guys use that I might have missed? I put together all of the tools that I use for the miniature hobby in a convenient little website article that you can find linked in the description. Also in the description are links to all the tools that we discussed in the course of this video. And disclaimer, they are all affiliate links, which means that when you purchase using those links, I get a little extra commission and no extra cost to you. And I mean a lot to get your support in this way. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it in other ways, some popular ways are Patreon or also buying merchandise that you can find on Teespring. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Hey, my meta!